Hello everybody, so I just had the fun idea to build an app that's kind of like a slot machine. So, you just like spin the slot machine and then it goes around and then if like the, if any of them match up, it equals like a certain price. So just a simple game like that. And I was just thinking about the different ways I could code that, what it would look like. So I really want to try to just create a simple app real quick and then just like have fun with this. I'm going to do a rails new command and then let's call this slots. Then I'll do dash D for PostgreSQL as a database. And then for CSS, I'll do dash C tailwind. This will set up tailwind, it'll set up Postgres and it'll set up everything we need for our app. So I'm going to run that command and then I'm just waiting for it to load. I just called it slots and it's going to be fun app. Let's cd into slots. I'm going to create the database real quick. You have to create a database when you're using Postgres. Now we have these tables set up and we're ready to use them in our app. Then I'm going to generate like a simple controller. I'll do Rails to controller home and then I'll give it index action just like that and then I'm gonna change the config roads.rb I'm gonna edit this file and set the root to the home index so I'll have to just change the slash to a pound sign and make sure that I have the root set then I could start the server with bin slash dev and open up the browser go to localhost 3000 and I'll see the home index text, which means everything's set up inside of our app. And I can edit this code now. So if I open up our app in a code editor by doing code dot in the terminal, that'll open up VS Code. And just make sure that you have the server started so we can see those new changes to the home page. Then I'm gonna come in here, go to app views home index. And this is that page. If I want to change it, give the name of our app. I'm just going to call it Slot Machine. And I'm going to say, like, take, take a chance and possibly <laughs> in a lot. I don't know. I don't really know what else to put it for now. It's a simple text. Let's try to center it. Let's add text center to both reads. Actually, I might just change this top level div. And do like a flex call item center. I kind of want to do a cool background, like a gradient. So I'm doing gradient to bottom, from indigo to like blue. Okay, and then we get this little space. I'm gonna try to make it bigger. Or actually, I'm gonna go to layouts application.html.erb in this file, and I'm gonna delete the main container because that's what's adding all that border around. See that we're on the blue. So if I delete it, then we'll just see that we have the blue. And now, if I want to just make it take up the whole height of the page. I can go back to index and I can give it a height. I can do a min height screen. I think that's added in. And then I can do padding top 36. Just like that. And hey, this looks pretty good to me now. So we have our main text and then I'm going to actually create the slot machine. Which we can add a div for that. Do a rounded large. And let's just do like a light gray. And inside of here, we would have like these three different boxes. So I'm going to do grid, grid calls three, gap eight. And then I can just work on adding these boxes. So I'm going to do a height 64 with full G white. And let's see if we can view this if I reload. No, I don't even see anything. So I guess I need to make that box. I need to give it a width full. So it can take up the full space. 
just like that. Although now it's taking it literally is taking up the full screen. So I'm gonna add a max width to Excel. I'm gonna MX auto. Reload. Okay, now it looks a little bit better. It looks like the rounded large isn't affecting our second box inside. So to fix that, so we have the rounded all around, we can do overflow hidden on this div, on like the outer layer of the div, and now you'll see that it's fully rounded. But I want to add more padding around the box, because there's just not enough padding in like for the inside of the slot machine. So I might even do another, I might take the grid stuff and move it into a second layer like this and then we do even like a width three-fourths so it's going to be a good bit smaller and it looks like I'm missing that ending bracket all right so and then we also would do an MX auto inside of here yeah, there we go so it's kind of pushed off from the side and then instead of 64, I think I'll decrease it to height 40. All right, now it's more of a square. And then I can add some padding onto the box. So we do PY6. There we go. And then if I just duplicate these boxes, I just like copy pasting two times. Now we have three different boxes. And this looks pretty cool. So that's where we'd have, you know, the slot machine, you roll it and then there would be like a few different options that it could land on. So what I'll do is then I'll have like a button, which for now I'll just put outside of the slot machine div. I'm just going to do a link to uh, I don't even know what it would say like on a slot machine. I don't really play slot machines that much. or I don't think I've ever played it except for in video games. Just do like a play button and I'll do a gradient on this gradient to right from indigo to pink rounded large pattern two and we get this kind of button thing so I want to add some width on that put 16 height center maybe more maybe like width 32 that might be a little bit too big. I mean, yeah, that's fine. And I'll add a bracket, or a, not a bracket, a BR for a break in between the slot machine and the play button. And then I guess when I click play, I would want it to roll the slot machine. That's kind of what I was thinking. Because I want the calculations to happen on the back end so that we're not just doing JavaScript. Because it'll make it more secure and like more like a real website. And also we might want a history of like the slot machine rules. So that's why I was thinking we'll have a model for that. So let me just stop the server real quick. And then I'm going to do a Rails view model command to create a new model. And for the name of the model, we can just call it like spin, or we can call it roll. We could call it like anything, like try. I'm just going to call it spin. And then we'll have a. Uh, for like the, the values of the spin. Let's call it spin values. Or I could just call it like values text. And I'm gonna turn it into an array in the model because I wanna store it as an array of three different numbers. But we have to store it as text to do it in Postgres because I wanna store it as an actual array. So I'll show you what I mean. So we're just gonna have that spin model and then a values colon text to make it type text. Then I'm gonna run Rails DB migrate, migrate to database. Then I can restart the server bin slash dev. And back here in the code, I'm gonna create a new route. So in the config folder, routes.rb, I'm gonna go and define a new route. So I'll create a resource bins only create. So I'm just going to do a spins controller with the create action and then inside of link to play, 
and just make this go to spins path. And I can add a data turbo method of post. So we're going to make a post request to the spins path. Then I'm going to go create the spins controller. Inside of the controllers folder, create a file called spins controller to RB. And then I'm, inside of there, I'm going to have a spins controller class that inherits from application controller. And then create action on this. Then on this, I'll set, I'll set uh, instance variable spin equals spin create. And the spin values is going to be set to spin values, which I'm going to have to generate, which I guess I'll do it in the controller right here. So spin values is going to equal, we're going to have to generate three different random numbers. So we could go like one to three dot map to map the number and then Basically, we just return a random number 1 through 10, which I'm going to have to look that up. So get a random number 1 through 10 in Ruby. We can use rand, a 1.b. Okay, cool. So let's try that out. Rand 1.10. Although, actually, what am I saying? It's not really going to be 1 through 10, right? Because how many images are we really going to have on the slot machine? That's kind of what I have to realize. And I think I wanted 1 through 3 because we're going to have 3 images. And let me go quickly grab those images just so we can display it real quick. And what I'm going to use for the icon slash images, I guess I'll go to flat icon. I use them a lot because they have a ton of different free icons and you don't have to sign in or anything. You can just download them for free. It's pretty cool. So I'm going to type in like a Ruby or like a gem. Not like a Ruby gem really, but it, I guess it could be. It's basically, this is literally the Ruby logo. Let's do 256 pixels. That should be a good size. And then just click free download. Just like that, we have our image. And then to bring it to the app, I'm going to put it inside of the assets images folder. I can just drag it in here. Oh, I guess I had a bit of a background. I didn't notice that. That should be fine, though. And then on the index, I'm going to display it real quick. So inside of the first box, I'm going to put an image tag. And then we'll do our ruby.png. See what that looks like if I reload. Yeah, it kind of fits right inside. And then if we wanted to do some styling, do with full object cover. So then it should take up the parent element, which it already kind of is. And if we wanted to do padding on the box around it, we could do like P4 and then it kind of resizes it a little bit. And that looks good. So we have a Ruby. What's another thing that we might have inside of our slot machine? <laughs> I don't even know because I haven't done a slot machine. Like, let's think. Oh, a cherry. I've seen that. This looks kind of cool. So let's get the 256. Do the free download with the cherries. So I'll also put this into my app in the assets images folder, just like that. And then I'm gonna do. Let me just copy this image tag, put it inside of this box. I'm going to call it cherries.png. Add the padding. And let's take a look at what that looks like. Reload. Okay, that looks pretty good. We have the ruby, we have the cherry. And then why don't we just do like a pineapple? This is going to be a really fun game. Sweet, so we have a pineapple. Let's copy this over. Pineapple. Do it with the P4. 
Alright, so we have something that looks like this. We have the ruby, the cherry, the pineapple. And then when you click play, it should do like a random spin. That's kind of how it would work. And then it spins on the front end, it starts spinning. And then on the back end, we generate the spin. So, wait, what happens when we click? We get un unknown attribute spin values for spin. Oh, because I it's not spin values. I called it values, not because I already had the spin model. So we're going to set values to spin values. But first, I'm going to go and serialize those the values attribute on the model. So we have to go to the models folder, spin to RB. We have to add a serialize, which will change that text field into an array field. Or like it in Ruby or inside of Rails will interpret the text field as a certain type of object. So we can serialize values and then we can do array. And you have to set the codec to something, which I forget what to use here. Serialize Ruby. If serialize Rails, I mean. Coder. So I guess you have to do coder to JSON. Something like that. Wait, not like that, like JSON. No, it is. It actually is all caps. Kind of hard to figure that out. Okay, so let's just go and try this again. Click play says it inserted in spin so if I go into rails console by typing rails c just do spin dot last look we get the values and it's serialized as an array so that's perfect and each time we spin it'll give us new numbers and then basically what would happen is we make that post and then we send back we might actually send back like a new component that replaces this. So I can add an ID on this div, the one with all the columns. And I'll say like flops, all right? And then inside of home, actually we can create uh, inside of the views folder, let's create a new folder called spins. And then inside of there, I'll create a partial underscore slots that you see over your B. And I'm going to drop this same code in here. But the slots file inside of the spins, I'm going to probably have to add some JavaScript on. So what I'm going to do is, I think on each of these boxes, I'll add a stimulus controller, but I'll have the same name. So I'll do a data controller. Slot. We call it slot spinner. That's kind of weird, but and then I'm gonna set like the value. So data slot spinner. Uh, number or like. It's kind of hard to figure out. Cause I'm just trying to pass in the, the value like the number value, but because stimulus uses a value API, I can't do like value value. <laughs> That, I mean, I could, but it would just look so weird. Data slot spinner number value. So weird. And then, oh, right. I guess, you know, what I'll do is I'll only have one and I'll just loop over. I'll go from the, from the spin dot values dot each do. So I'll loop over those values and then that'll only be, since there's only three values, it'll loop over three times, display the three slots, and then we'll pass it in here to the number value. Now I have to create that stimulus controller. So inside of the terminal, I'm going to do rails to stimulus slot spinner, right, the slot spinner controller. So that sounds kind of cool. Inside of JavaScript controllers, we now have a slot spinner. And inside of here, the job of this controller is just to spin the slots. 
So I still have to figure out how that's going to work. But I think for now, we're just going to take, make sure we have all of the images and drop them inside of this div. Make sure we have cherries and pineapples. All right, this is gonna get pretty crazy. So we have all three of these, and then I just needed to like, I can't even really test this out, but I guess when we click the play button inside of that controller, so let's go into the controller spins controller. So we have the spin set to an instance variable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna render a turbo stream. It's gonna be a turbo stream dot update for slots. And then let's do a partial bins. Wait, isn't that what I called it? No, I called it slots, right? My bad. And then locals spin. I'm gonna set to at spin. Alright, now we should be able to test out the spin. So I click play and then we got this is kind of weird actually. It's almost like the images didn't show up. Let's go back to this partial. Look, these images right here, they just like didn't. Because I see that we updated. But the images aren't there. It's kind of weird. Alright, what if we remove those two? No, there's still no images. That's weird. Let's see what it's saying in the console. Oh, we're actually getting an error. Please pass the class as a keyword argument. Oh, that's type. I get it. Because I just passed it inside of the spin, the RB. I just passed it as like the second argument. They want me to actually set it to like type array. I don't think that was causing the error though. The weird thing is that it's not showing the image. It's showing three different uh, like boxes, but it's not showing the images inside of them. That's really weird. Let's console log from its slot spinner. We can say like hello in JavaScript whenever it gets loaded. So it got loaded three times, as you can see, but the images just aren't there. So I'm gonna inspect and see what's happening. So we should have an image. It's just like, for some reason, the width is just going to zero. Oh, look at this. Because it's getting, oh, instead of update, because we're sticking the same box inside of another grid. So we have like a semi grid and that's kind of what's breaking everything. That makes sense. So inside of our spins controller, instead of update, we want to replace the whole element. That's my mistake. Now let's play. Oh, there we go. We're getting somewhere. So I can see that we have the images. And because of the overflow hidden, it's already like it's not showing, but there is three different images here behind this box. So now we just want to make this uh, start like doing a sort of spin animation, like a roll animation. So that's where we add in some JavaScript inside of the slot spinner controller. I want to like slowly scroll down the element. And also let's make that element scrollable. So on this box right here. Can do overflow wide scroll. Do play. Oh look, and now it's scrollable. So basically, we just want the JavaScript to scroll for us. So I'm gonna look up how we can. Well, I think I already know how to scroll, but I have to remember. So scroll to bottom of element in JavaScript. So let's check out this answer. It's just as simply as doing this scroll top equals scroll height. Let's go ahead and do that inside of our slot spinner controller. Instead of object div, it would be this dot element. I'm gonna reload, click play, 
So the thing here is it automatically scrolled all the way down. It didn't do any sort of animation. So we have to look up how to slowly scroll with JavaScript. How to create a smooth scrolling effect. Is that what we want? But we can try this. So with CSS, we can add scroll behavior smooth. And I think that'll at least add some sort of animation. So we can add that into the application.css. Right here, scroll behavior smooth. It's really not going to change much. Oh yeah, it really, it, it actually didn't change anything at all. Yeah, forget that. So what we need to do is we need to like make it scroll at a certain speed so we can actually view the scrolling happening. I don't know how we can do that. So let's console log both of these values. Scroll top and scroll height. So if I print it, we get zero and 330. So I almost want to like, I could count up so I could do a loop. I could say I can do a for loop. I've seen a lot of those. So for actually, <laughs> I'm gonna have to look that up for loop in JavaScript. Yeah, this is exactly what I need. And then I need to wait until it counts up. So for i equals zero, i less than car length. So instead of car length, it would be what? The scroll height. We count up and then we would slowly set the scroll top. Well, I so like that. Let's see what that looks like. It should be like slowly scroll. Wait, what the heck? It went instantly. Let's console log through here. Adding a little print i. Okay. No, because it just like instantly executed all of it. Because the JavaScript's too fast. So what we need to do is we need to add a sleep in between. Which is kind of funny. Like how do we there's not a sleep inside of JavaScript. The only way to do that is with set timeout. Which means we'd have to wrap this set timeout for a certain amount of milliseconds. So to get that milliseconds, I guess we could just do like I, but it'd be like one, two, it, I guess it, that would kind of work. Okay. Hey, there we go. We got our animation. And that, that speed is actually pretty good. But what we need to do is once we get to the bottom, we need to go back to the top and keep so we can like keep the scrolling effect. So to do that, maybe I can just go at the end, I can do console log done. But no, because see we're looping through here doing the set timeout. And we don't actually finish until the last set timeout. So we need to check like if i equal to Start scroll height. And this means that this is the last one. The last count. Let's do it. Where do we get that last count console log? No, we don't get a last count. So probably if I I less than so yeah as soon as we get to the like where it's equal it just wouldn't run anymore so we need to say if i plus one is equal to the scroll height then that would be the last one so see we get this event last count we get it three times for each of the three elements so what we're going to do is actually we're going to rerun this function so what i'll do is i'll move this into a separate function maybe at the bottom the page do like function spin and then we can pass an element maybe that's all we do then we just go through the loop and we have to replace this dot element with 
L to replace a few things. We have this spin function, and then inside of connect, we could just spin this element, and then I would loop through, and then once it gets to the bottom on the last count, we would say spin, and then we pass in the element, so it just keeps repeating indefinitely. And then now let's see what happens when we click play. Wait, nothing happens. We didn't even get to the last count console log. That's kind of weird. I equals L scroll height. Well, we also didn't get the, the adding console log. Oh wait, it kind of worked for a second. Oh, I'm also searching for last count. I see. No, it is working. Look at that. We get all the logs because I kind of had it filtered for a second. That's where I wasn't seeing it. So it looks like it is working. All we have to do is like basically spin it a few times. And then, yeah, once that's done, so let's say like current spin equals one. Let's just do count equals one, current spin equals one. So those are the defaults. And then inside of spin, we can pass the count, so the amount of times we want to spin it. Let's say it's five times. Then inside of here, we can say if current spin equal to count, or how about less than equal to count, then we're going to do the spin, which would keep it repeating. And then inside of here, after we do this, we'll just say current spin plus equal to one. And then this would automatically take care of ending it. So let's just try to do it without any parameters. So it's just going to be the first one. Count equals zero. Current spin equals one. This would work, but then once we add it, it shouldn't do it more than once. So let's try this. Click play. And it worked. It only did it one time. Now let's try to do two times. Actually, let's do three times and see if that works. There we go. Oh. No, it's not really working. It's doing infinite times. Right. Oh, because I see why. Because inside of spin, we need to pass the count down. But then the current spin is going to be the new current spin. So just pass down current spin and that'll work. One, two, three. Yep, it works. So let's say that we want to spin it five times. We would get that five times effect and then it would stop. So that's perfect. And then what we need to do is we need to stop on the correct element, basically remove all the other elements. So I think the easiest way to do that is to just have like two sections. So actually this is kind of tricky because I don't want to mess up the styling that we already have really, because we have this overflow Y scroll and we're using the element but maybe we'll have one target that's like a hidden image and then we can just remove the rest of the images. We can do something like that. So we can have one image that we actually determine based off the value. So the value is gonna be kind of tricky. We could have an array where it's like, you know, we could have an object Reset. We set up this thing where like one, one is equal to ruby.png, two is equal to cherries.png, three is equal to pineapple.png, and then we access the value based off the value here, and then we can do image tag around that. It's kind of like one way to handle this. Try to play, oh, we instantly get some sort of error. Obviously with that code, it didn't like that. Doing the object like this and then trying to get it off the value. I thought that might work. I'm 
try to do this in the web console. No, see that causes an error. I guess you can't have numbers as the value as the name of the key. We need to do it like we need to basically wrap these in quotes. And then get it with the value to string. That's another option. Still get no location provided, can't build URI. I didn't like that. Okay, instead of doing an image tag, I just want to display the result of this real quick. So I don't even see that result. Let's just try to display the hash. Okay, we do see it down at the bottom. And then if I also display the value itself, we can see what that looks like. The value is three. And then what if we try to display, if we set the hash to hash equals this, and I want to get the hash value, see what we get? No, we don't get anything off the hash value. Value to string. But we almost did, need to do to string dot to symbol, weirdly enough. If we do it, it actually works. That's funny. We have to do two, two string, two symbol. That's so weird. But that's what gets it to work. But just doing it all in one looks like it throws an error. Oh, because I had hash. <laughs> hey, no, that actually works. And if I wrap it in image tag, it's so weird though. Like this, this code looks just insane. An alien code. Oh no, we get an error. It's just like too crazy. I feel like it's too much for the system. No, it works. It actually works. So then I just have to add some attributes on this image tag. First of all, the class with full object cover. And then we're just going to do. Oh, also on the class, let's do hidden. So it's hidden. And then we'll do. A data lot spinner target and then this will be set to like uh, I always have a hard time thinking about what I'm gonna call it because I'm just like coding sometimes you got to slow down and think about it slot spinner target Set it to just call it image target. So inside of here, let's define that static target equals image target. Oh, and then also remember the value, we need to define that. Static values define number. Let's type number. And now we can access it inside of our code. So I forget we wanted the number because we wanted to display the correct image, but we actually don't really need that anymore. So we might not even use the number we're getting passed. So basically, what we're going to do is spin this element, and then at the end of it, we're going to do we're gonna like hide all the images and then just show the image. So this uh, image class just remove hidden. But all the other images we're gonna hide. We think this dot element dot children we say array from this dot element children for each child. So it's not add hidden. Something like that. 
Actually, I want to do another condition. Okay, I can't remember if we can put the condition inside of here. Like, if. I don't think we can do that. Not child dot class list. Fucking gain sitting. Yeah, we can't just do it like that. I don't even know if we can do that. Looks so crazy. That would hide all the other images. Just cannot read properties of undefined reading class list. Child class list. Yeah, true. I wonder what this even returns. This saw element of children. This is just like an array of elements. Four different images. All right. Let's just count the log child. See what we get there. Oh, we're just getting the image. But right here, it's giving me undefined method class list. Oh, because this saw image. That's the part that was failing. That's funny. Okay, let's remove that. Run the play. Oh, it actually removes the images. Cool. But then this image target. I'm going to have to remove the class list. And the problem there was because I had this saw image instead of this saw image target. So look, what actually happens is we get the correct. So this is actually what's supposed to happen, right? We're getting the random image and then it's displayed. Oh, so that actually would have been a jackpot. But the problem is we're not seeing the scrolling animation anymore. And that's because the scrolling was happening with set timeout. But since we're, we're running this command, it's not waiting because JavaScript isn't synchronous it's asynchronous so it actually just runs through all of the code and the set timeouts is just having like a callback for like a certain amount of time later so really what we need to do is we need to have a whole like we need to wait for this function right and the way that you can do that with javascript is by using async await so if we did a wait spin then it would wait for the spin but the spin has to return a promise inside of here so a promise is like a whole thing in JavaScript. And promise for function. JavaScript. It's not really that crazy. We can find the documentation right in here. Uh, it's kind of a lot of stuff. I just want to figure out how I can create a new promise. Weird, they're not showing me how to create one. Return promise from a function. Oh, right here, return new promise, and then there's a resolve and a reject. So what that looks like is inside of the whole spin, we're gonna do return new promise. We're gonna wrap all this code. And then finally, whenever we're done, we call resolve, which will resolve the await. So that would happen well, actually, it would happen right here in the else. So if current spin, like when we finally get to the point where the current spin is greater than count, on that else, we would do resolve. And we're really not passing anything, but if we wanted to, we could, so you can pass some value, which could be used up here in spin. And if we didn't want to do async await, if we wanted to do, Another way I'll show you, we can do dot dot then. So you can see spin dot then, and see this would be the callback. And we could pass in all of our code. So why don't we just do it like that? Instead of doing async wait, because it should both work. But it looks like we're missing the ending parentheses on the promise. So make sure that you have that. Now let's reload and see what happens. It actually, we're seeing the animation again. 
but we're not getting the dot then. That's not working. So I'm gonna do console log. Spinning. And it's also down here. Let's make sure the console log. Resolving. Now let's do the spin. So we got three logs for resolving. And we did call resolve. But it looks like the dot then isn't working. So let's look that up. Dot then JavaScript. So see, because we return a promise, we're supposed to use dot then to do the callback. It looks like it's not working in this situation. Spin. The calling this should return new promise. Hey, so I'm gonna try to pass a message. Console.log message. Still, it's not resolving. Like it says it's resolving, but then it's not actually calling this callback code. All right, instead of this, not put a message. And let's do the async await thing. So we'll do async on the connect function. And then I'll await this spin function, which will be, uh, yeah, that should work. Although the only, ah, th oh, this is kind of tricky because look inside of here, once we do the spin loop, it's gonna like try to return another promise, which wouldn't be able to resolve. So it'd be kind of like a weird glitch. So that doesn't really seem like a good option. So let's remove this and let's rethink this. Let's take the promise out. This is weird. Actually, I think what we might want to do is just put the promise inside of the connect function. Right? We could just say like const spin promise equals new promise. Right, like this is fine. And then we do the spin function inside. We have to pass in current spin one, that's fine. And then we have to pass in resolve as the callback. Right, no, we're never gonna do that. We're gonna, yeah, this is kind of tricky. This is so tricky because we have to wait for each, like we have to wait for all of the spins to complete. Oh yeah, so why don't we just pass in the callback? Finish callback. And then we could just set that to nil as a default. And then inside of the else, this is whenever the current spin is done, so like there's no more spins. We're going to say if finished callback, then we do the finished callback, we'll execute it. Simple enough, but let's see. Cannot read properties of undefined reading element, so right away we get an issue. Oh, inside of the spin promise, because we're using function, it gets rid of the scope of this. So let's not use function, let's just use the arrow function, I think that should be fine, oh, except for finished callback, uh, wait I'm so confused, spin promise, right we need to create that, we need to define the finished callback, which we can just define it as like a function right here and put the code that we want to have done at the end of spin. I'm fine with that. And boom. Okay, I did it one time. It said nil is not defined. <laughs> Finish callback equals nil. Oh. Is nil not a thing? I thought it was. 
We have to use null. Right, we have to use null inside of JavaScript. So no errors, it looks like it was fine. Uh, let's console log. We need to call back. Because that should have been doing it. And no, there's no console log. Finish call back. Completed. Spinning. And I'll try to log finish callback. Finish callback is null for each of them. What the heck? It was supposed to be this. This was supposed to be the finish callback. It's supposed to be set to this function. Highlighting is kind of weird right now. Maybe I'm just too tired from building this game. There's no one, two, three, four. See, this is the fourth item. The finished callback. I don't get it. Current spin. Oh, I guess I do get it because the finished callback would only get passed in the first time. And then since we're running spin over and over again, we wouldn't have the finished callback anymore. So another option is just to keep passing it through. Finished callback. And then we just won't check for it anymore. We'll just expect it to have it. Try that out. It actually did it. That time it worked. It got the callback and everything, and it did it. Perfect, so that's how you do it, I guess. <laughs> After a bunch of fidgeting, I finally got it. And go back to the shorter syntax, I guess. And let's try it out. Boom. Just like that. We can do consecutive plays. Oh, three pineapples. That means I actually basically got a jackpot. So the next thing I want to do is see how there's like the side scrollers on the side. I want to remove that. And we can do that with some CSS. So hide scrollers, CSS, or hide scroll bar. So the way that you do it is, but we want the scroll bar. The thing is we don't want to do hidden because we want to actually visually see the scrolling. So we have to do hide scroll bars, but keep functionality. We need to add basically this styling. So what I usually do for something like this is Think we could do we could make use of the Tailwind CSS, but I forgot how to do that. I think you can just do layer components and then define one, or you can just do it in regular CSS. So WebKit scrollbar. We need a certain type of class that we'll use. So I can just call it hidden scrollbar, and then we'll just apply these different stylings. So. This is for WebKit, which would be on Chrome, and then this is for the other browsers. And it's just all using it off the hidden scroll bar class. So what we do is we add hidden scroll bar to this div that we're scrolling on. Just like that. And let's go take a look. Do the scroll. Oh, it looks perfect. Wow, this actually looks really good. And then we'll probably add some sounds too. So it makes noise when it's doing like the lot rolling and of course like some animation some confetti so let's do some sounds real quick so i'm just gonna go on youtube look up like slot machine sounds what does this sound like Oh, we're going to have to chop these up to get the different certain spots. But I'm going to go in the console. I actually have this like little Ruby grip that will get me the MP3. Although it's pretty easy to get. So just like that, we have the slot machine MP3. I can go and grab that from Ubuntu.
All right, let's see. I just want to like take that, put it into sound effects. That's a good place. And then I kind of want to like chop it up. So I need an audio editor. I hate to go all the way in FL because FL can be annoying sometimes. I wonder do I have Audacity? I don't have Audacity. Let me just download Audacity. That's like the old editor I used to use. It's super easy. Let's install Audacity. Through that installer. There we go. That's super easy. Now we're going to need a few different sounds. Oh, it looks like it's still installing. So this is like the success sound. That's kind of like the, the uh, spinning sound. So we're going to put those into different audios. So we're going to like chop it up, split it up. I don't even know, maybe this first part could be like, let me just mute this. Maybe I wanna like delete it for a second. I don't even know, I forget. No, I'll select this and I'm gonna export to computer. I'll call it like spinning. Let's just do MP3 so it's like a smaller file. And I wanna put it into just the desktop, I guess. All right, there we go. Now I'll come back to this track. This is like the, the winning sound. So we just do file, export audio, export to computer, winning, export that, there we go. Simple. Now on the desktop, we have those two sounds, winning, spinning. That's funny, it rhymes. Now I'm gonna put in my app. So I'll put it in the assets folder also, but I'm going to create a new folder called audios and then inside of uh, config manifest.js, I'm going to add another link tree for dot dot slash audios. So this will include our audios into the asset pipeline. Now we're going to have those audio files, which I have to now I have to add, uh, drag and drop them in to audios. So over here from the desktop, dragging them in. Now we have spinning and winning. And then to pass them into the JavaScript, that's what I'll do right here. I'll do data slot spinner spinning value. For that, we're gonna pass in asset URL or spinning mp3 that looks good and I'm basically gonna copy this paste it replace spinning with winning for the other one and then inside of the JS in slot spinner controller we're gonna have spinning it's gonna be type string and winning type string and then what we're gonna do is when we start spinning so inside of spin, or even just right before spin, we're gonna start playing the spinning sound. So first of all, we need an audio player. So we can say this dot audio equals new audio. This is an audio instance. Then we can set the source equals this dot spinning value. Then we can say this dot audio dot play. Then we're gonna do the whole spinning. And basically, at the end, well, we need to figure out if they won or not, which is going to be kind of tricky because we're just passing in data slot spinner number value, its value. We're probably going to want to pass in the array. So let me add another attribute, data slot spinner 
uh, values, or how about like uh, bin value, and then we'll just pass in the direct array spin dot values, and then inside of our controller, we can have that spin. This is going to be type array. It's as simple as that, and then what we can do is at the end of the spin, I need to check the spin value, which will return an array, and we need to check are all the objects the same. So to do that, I'm just going to look it up. I'm going to check if all items are identical in the array in JavaScript. Oh, so there's dot all equal. That's a function. You can check if this dot spin value dot all equal. Then we're gonna say this dot audio source equals this dot winning value. This dot audio dot play. We also might want to set like the start time between these, but let's just see. Hopefully there's not an issue. I want to open up console just to see if there's any errors. Then I'm going to press play. Oh, immediately we get an error. The asset spinning.mp3 is not present in the asset pipeline. Oh, so that's when we're trying to pass it in. It's trying to say that spinning.mp3 is not in the pipeline, but it is right here. Spinning.mp3. Asset URL. Spinning.mp3, it should be right there. Config manifest, we have the audios. Maybe I have to move it up. I'm trying to say it's not present. Hmm. Maybe I have to use slash, like audio slash that. It's kind of weird. I've never had to do that before. No, it's still saying it's not present. What the heck? Spinning.mp3 is right here. Let's try to display it on the index. Do an asset URL. Spinning.mp3. It should be there. Let's reload. Thing it's not there. Let's try asset path. It's still, like it's not there. What if we try audio tag? That should render as an audio file. It's still saying no. It's so weird. This has never happened before. Because usually you can just add like the folder called it audios, and I put it inside of the manifest means it should be good to go and it's just like giving me trouble now let's try to restart the server come on there's got to be something wrong oh look now it works with the restart of the server hmm. that was weird look at that oh the only thing is we need to at the end of the spin, we need to stop playing the sounds. So let's just do at the end here. Say this the audio dot pause. Or how about let's say this the audio that stops? So that'll actually reset the audio. Wait, it said stops, not a function. Oh, maybe that's not a thing. <laughs> Wait, let's look that up. Audio. Dot stop. Is that not a method? Instead of stop, you could try with this. I mean, yeah, that's what I thought you could say stop. You can do pause and then set the current time to zero. Let's do that. The audio current time zero. Come back here. Put the slots. Alright, there we go. It said all equals not a function. Oh, that's what I was thinking. I've never heard of all equal. 
So let me look it up again, check if all items in array are equal. JavaScript. Oh, it wanted me to define a function called all equal. And then we would check that at the end. Array dot, well, why do we need a function? I don't get it. We could just do the dot every. That's kind of what I was asking. But I guess this is a little bit cleaner. If all equal. Oh, it actually, we got a jackpot. So I just want to quickly turn the sound down. How do we change the volume? Yeah, definitely set that volume to like a low percentage. 0 2, that should be pretty good. I think that's better. It's going. Yeah, this is definitely feels like gambling. And then boom. It feels so good. It's just like all the coins are dropping. Now that was pretty sick. So now I have to create the rules for the gambling, which it's kind of funny. Cause like, I mean, I want to do that real quick. Take the chart. So I'm going to take this image tag code. Let's go back to the index. And then underneath play, we'll have like the, the values chart to show you how much you can earn. We'd have another div that's like rounded large. Gray 100, whatever. Um, oh, the max width 2XL with full MX auto. And I would have the image tag thing with like the same configuration. But we can just use. We need something like this like one to string, two symbol to get the right one. And then we don't need this JavaScript attached to this. So I can remove the data. Kind of tricky because like this goes all the way down. All right, there we go. We really didn't need all that complex code. Oh, it's not even displaying either. This div, it should have went underneath the play button. It's not showing up. Put some hello text. There we go. And then yeah, I think the logic I had in here was just too complex. Let's just look. All we need to do is just. Oh, also it's hidden. I forgot I had the hidden class. Let's just do image tag. Let's literally take the code from up here. The freaking just image tag for the Ruby. I think I'm just a little bit tired out right now. It's like 1 a.m. I don't usually make videos this late, but this just was sounded like a fun thing to do right now. Do height 24. Oh, we're still doing object cover. That's the problem. Width 24. There we go. Get a more reasonable size. So like, now I need to actually create the chart. So maybe like 3x Ruby, that would equal a certain amount of money. Let's put a div around this to like XXL flex. See how that looks. All right, that's not bad. We could put a span around the text. And I just want to do some gap item center. Oh, yeah, there we go. Do 2x, 2XL be like 3x diamonds is going to equal a certain amount of money for like colon 
hundred dollars. Is that a lot of money? I have this like sort of colon thing. <laughs> we might want to put a span around that. Three X diamonds, hundred dollars. And we could put actually let's not do the colon, let's just do like text green five hundred and font semi bolts. There we go. Three so three diamonds is gonna be hundred bucks. Copy this again and let's do for the cherries. Cherries is probably like the best one, like a thousand bucks for three cherries. Ooh, and let's put some space between these. So on the top, let's change it to flex, flex all, gap four. There we go. We have some gap between the elements. See that? Oh, that's a thousand dollars. Let me copy this, and we'll do it for the pineapple. This is going to be five hundred. Yeah, this is fun. Three X. The ruby is going to be 100, pineapple is 500, so this is like kind of fun already. We can see what we're looking for. And then maybe there's like another option. If you have any cherries, you would immediately get like $50. How about that? So I'm going to copy one again and just do 1x cherries, $50. See like that, 1x. 2x could be uh, $250. If you manage to get two cherries, this could be our price line right here, or our price guideline or whatever. And I'm gonna play. So that would be 50 bucks right there. So now I wanna work on adding in the money, and then we could probably like display that on the page. So for money wise, that's where it's gonna, that's where we're gonna have to worry about the security more, because I don't want anybody hacking this gambling site, even though it's all like, just a fun and games. I still want to do this the best way possible. So let's quickly add in money. So I guess we can start that. We could just straight up start saving it in the session. So inside of the home index, we could say if session. Although, <laughs> no, immediately. Now think about it. Storing it in the session. That's just a cookie, right? So I think anybody would be able to although it's not it's like an internal session is kind of private i don't know tell me in the comments if you're watching this what you guys think so if session money not session money i'm gonna set session money zero and then we'll just display that up at the top on the home index i guess I'm just going to do a div that's like absolute top zero, right zero. And then we could just display session money. We could do like text green 500, text 2XL. We just have our money way over here. I kind of want to organize that a little bit better. So maybe write. 50%. Okay, there we go. Kind of puts it in the center and then top like eight. And let's do a number to currency for the money. There we go. So it shows us our money up at the top. And then maybe I want to, around the money, I can put like another div. Let's do some padding. And maybe like some darker green. It was actually so much fun. I wanted to build a slot machine with code for a while. All right, it's not really 100% centered, but I'm okay with that. Oh, so that should have been 50 bucks. So see, it's not updating. I want to get that updating. So let's just go ahead and put this into a, like a partial. We can just render money. And then that'll be inside the home. I'll create a file called underscore money that we can all the Airbnb. And we're gonna drop in 
this little bit of code that's literally just this one piece and then we'll render that inside of the spins controller we'll actually render the money because we already know the spin the funny thing is we know the spin but then we just have to go post it over here wait for it to complete and then i want to update the money after we've completed and the funny thing with that is we can kind of guess how long this takes if we play it kind of takes about like three seconds or like two seconds so i think a good way to do this is just to we can do the render that's fine so this will return but you can actually keep doing code in the controller after you render we could sleep for two seconds and then we could do off the spin we could broadcast update to spin target that element to the money and then put the partial home slash money so what this means is we're going to need to be in the home index first of all we're going to need to be turbo streaming from the spin which wait <laughs> already that's not going to work we can't turbo stream from spin we're going to need to do so in the real world, in the real app, we might have like users and we could stream from the users uh, from like the certain game or like from just the user in general. But right now, uh, on the spins controller, let's just broadcast to like a, a name that we use. Let's just call it slot machine. And then we're gonna have to turbo stream from here. So it's like the name of our channel. So back on the home index, Let's do a turbo stream from and that name slot machine. So that will work. Then we can broadcast to that right here. Let's see if that works. I don't even know. Do our play. Oh, it looks like we get an error. Connection refused. Oh, it looks like my Reddit server isn't running. So I have to start that server. like this let it start all right well now that they can't use that as an excuse let's play it looks like i'm still getting oh, that was weird look i did the sleep after the render but it still isn't processing rendering until after the sleep that's kind of interesting way that it that's that's interesting i never realized that it worked that way Anyways, we let's just leave the broadcast. Let's see if that gets ran. I don't think it is. Cause see, we should have the money. Oh, but we never updated the money. It's true. So are we broadcasting? I can't tell. Looks like we are. Look, broadcasting the slot machine. Action update. But there's just nothing to put inside. Actually, it looks like they're just broadcasting an empty div, but it's not even updating because we never put an ID. So we have to go set that ID of slots or no target money we called it. Yeah, it's kind of funny because we did a money partial. All right, so turbo stream for slot machine. Then the div needs to have the ID of money. And back in that controller. Let me make sure. Okay, everything looks right then. We're going to update the money. Oh, and look, now we see that the thing that I was saying is that I think it's just an empty partial when we broadcast. Uh, so the problem is inside of the money partial, I guess it's not able to access the session based off whatever environment's in. So instead, let's just use money and we'll expect that that's a variable that we pass in. So from that spins controller, I'll have a local money which would be like session money and we're just gonna have to update that in the controller find local variable or method money okay so we're gonna have to also pass it in on that index page right because we're rendering it up at the top we need to pass in money session money which might actually 
It might not be available here either. I know it is. Alright, there we go. So it would have updated. So to get the actual money, we have to add that money algorithm. The one that we defined on the index right here. So like three diamonds equals 100 bucks. We have to now go and add that into the back end. So inside of the spins controller, we need to update our session money. So to do that, we have to get the spin values and go through those and have like this whole case, this whole logic basically. So let's just handle, we have to also figure out like which maps to which. So one is Ruby, two is cherries, three is pineapple. What if we switch that around? I mean, no, that's fine, actually. Let's let's leave that how that is. So let's just do, like, spin values dot count value value equals 1. So we could check. How can I do this? Let's go, let's go do some messing around inside of the Rails console. So I'll stop the server for a second and open up Rails console. And let's just get the spin... Let's get the last spin. So I'll say spin equals spin.last. I'll set the spin as a variable so I can grab those values off of it and do some messing around. So I want to find out like what methods we have available. Oh, we have all dot all and we can pass a block number equal one. Look, it's not true. That's one way to check real quick. I think we'll do that. So I'll use dot all question mark. So if all of them are equal to one, it means all of them are equal to Ruby, which means you get a hundred bucks. So we could say if spin values dot all session money plus equals a hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah, I think that logic makes sense. Then if it's two, it means it's all cherries, which would be a thousand bucks. If it's all three, it means it's pineapples, which is 500 bucks. I'm pretty sure. Yep. All right, so already we got the logic. Then we just need to check for if there's one cherry, but not if there's all of them. So that's kind of one condition. Spin values dot all. So I guess first let's check, are they all the same value? How can we check that? All items are same value in a way. Literally. Unique dot size. Oh, that's a good idea. So check if the spin values dot unique size. So it, that means if they're all the same, then we'll run this logic. Otherwise, we'll run some other logic. So if spin values dot count value equals two so if it's equal to cherry uh, if the count is equal to how about if it's greater than if it's equal to two but yeah it's kind of tricky because i want to check for both options so if it's equal to two then we'll do session money plus 250 else if spin values like basically the same thing but I don't want to do it twice count equals count equals two then this else if count equals one session money is gonna plus equal 50 there we go. This is kind of some complex logic, but I think it should work. Let's test it out. So I'm going to play. Oh, I guess the server was off. So let's exit out of the console. Let's start the server. I have no idea if it's working because I just wrote all of that code without testing. Oh, now we get some styling problems, I guess. I right, go back to the index. What happened with the styling? That's weird. I didn't even do anything different. What 
the heck? Look, we're supposed to have width 10. What happens to the width 10? The heck? Look, the width 10 is just like not working for some reason. It's doing width full. That's weird. Oh, there is width full on the image for some reason. When did I add that? Or maybe it was already always there, but now it's causing me trouble. <laughs> Let's get rid of that width full. Reset. Okay, that's weird. It's weird how like stuff just stops working. Oh look, it's working. And the money updated too. Fifty dollars. So now we didn't get any, so like we didn't make money. Now the problem is it's the money's updating too fast. It's not waiting until the spin. Oh that's sweet. Our money's going up though. And the cool thing with storing it in session is if we reload, it's still there. Look, so it's still actually stored based on like our session. But then if we go local, if we go to like incognito localhost, we have a new session, so the money's back to zero. That's kind of fun. Uh, yeah, this is crazy. Play. You have to spin it like a bunch of times to just make a ton of money. Sounds crazy. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to make it delay until after it's done spinning. So basically just wait a few seconds. Uh, let's try to figure out how we can do that. Inside spins controller. So we calculated the new money, but then I just wanted to wait a second before I broadcast. So to do that, It's kind of tricky, actually, because I'm I haven't really been able to figure out how to do this. Unless we just put it into a background job, that's actually the best option. It's just a background job. I'm gonna go into the console. Wait, I almost went to Airbnb. I'm just forgetting where I'm at. So CD into slots. We do rel C job for like date money. I don't know. I guess I'll just call it that. We have an update money job. And I'll just do it right here. Like, update money job perform later. And then I'll pass in. What do I? I guess the only thing. No, because I, I need to broadcast off the spin. But I don't really need the spin. So, yeah, all we need is the money. So, we'll pass in session money. But right now, we don't really have like any scope for this. We're just doing like an, a general app, which actually means that the way we're set up, we can't have multiple tabs doing the slot machine at the same time, which is kind of bad. But we'll handle that later. So inside of our job, we get the money. And what I'll do is I'll sleep two seconds and then execute this broadcast. And since we don't have the spin, I'm just gonna do it off the spin dot. Like literally, it could be just dot new spin dot new broadcast, because we're just using the model for the broadcast method, which is included on all of the models. So I'm gonna reload, press play. I really can't tell if it's working or not. We got a cherry, so it should have worked. It looks like it didn't work then. Oh, we're getting an error in the console, so that would make sense. Undefined local variable session. Oh, right. Look, we're trying to still access session right here instead of... Here. <laughs> I need to pass money, the variable. There we go, that should fix that. Oh, it actually looked like the timing was on point, too. Yeah, look, the timing's perfect with two seconds. It does a spin. And then boom, it updates. That's perfect. Now we can spin our slot machine, make our money. This is really exciting. I want to hit a jackpot. We're still making money. Oh. Came up a thousand dollars.
Well, this has been really fun. I just built a slot machine game. Hope you guys enjoyed this, though. I've had fun just building apps, and I'm really excited to do more things like this. Just testing the limits of coding. And yeah, creating something like this is... I've been thinking about this for a while, just as like a fun thing, and I've really like got past a lot of the challenges. I guess one thing I see is like all, all of the lines have the same image, so I might want to switch that up, but... Oh, this is really cool.